Well, welcome to the shop. It's February 9, 2020, and this is going to be the start of a probably eight video mini series within the end of year video for family and friends. I'm going to loosely call it Commuter Cruising on Concordia. If you find my videos while surfing the uh, YouTube, uh, feel free to leave a comment. Would love to hear from what people think about um, what we do and how I go about doing it. Uh, so, commuter cruising. Um, like a lot of people, we have dreams of going cruising in various places, but for life, we decide that we're um, going to put that off and wait until the circumstances are better. Um, for us, we're able to be fortunate enough to leave her boat in various locations and go and visit her when our vacation time allows. Um, right now, our center cockpit cutter, uh, it's a Cape North 43, sits in Wyamas, Mexico. She's been there since 2017, and we sailed her down uh, in uh, two legs from San Francisco uh, over Thanksgiving, and then made the three-week trip around the uh, 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 Cabo San Lucas, and then up into the sea. It's been a lot of really great time down there. And um, I'll go ahead and put some of the links to the photos of that trip in the uh, description of this video. Uh, so, um, what the series is going to include, I think, uh, we'll have three to four shop videos of the various projects that are uh, in various stages of completion. Uh, these are things I like to do to be able to get as much of the detail work done while I have access to all my equipment here in my shop and be able to hopefully smoothly put it in while I, uh, when I get to the boat. Our plans is to, I will leave here on March 21st and I'll have four to five days to get everything done on the boat before Diane and Hannah come down from uh, their uh, breaks from college. And um, what are the projects that I have going on? Well, this is the start of the first one. Um, right now our boat has four 240 amp hour golf cart batteries. Um, they're in a bad spot. They're not only have they not seen anybody or any distilled water for more than a year, and it's been in an area that's very hot. Uh, and so I'm pretty sure the distilled water almost all evaporated, if not uh, maybe halfway there, and the, those batteries are cooked. They're just not going to work anymore. Um, I wanted to put in a lithium iron phosphate battery system, but after a lot of research, uh, getting on some various forums uh, on uh, uh, YouTube, uh, it just turned out to be the wrong solution for us and where we are right now. Uh, the summary of those those batteries, if you're doing the Battleborn or you build them yourself, is temperature. The uh, batteries don't work when it's in freezing conditions and then they start losing their cycle times when the temperature gets over, I believe it's 84, 86 degrees. Um, one place I read, if they get 10 degrees Fahrenheit above that magic number, they lose 20% of their cycle time. So it may be different, I'm not sure. Um, but because we're not at the boat very often, um, it's just the wrong solution for us. Um, the other downside of it is you just can't use a lithium battery that's, even if you size it to say 500 amp hours, it doesn't have the cold cranking amps as a starter battery. And yes, you can have a starter battery on your boat. Um, right now our systems are set up for one type of battery system. And in order to have two different systems, a lithium on one side and AGM for the battery starter battery, um, I'd have to isolate both battery systems and I don't have the time for that. So we're gonna punt and we bought these um, AGMs. Um, I did get a really good deal on these batteries. I was, um, called around to local battery shops and actually the first one I, I talked to at this Big Hog Battery Systems in South Sacramento. Um, his story was he bought too many batteries for a contract in the state of California and they sent four of the batteries back. I think one of them got sent back because they did something to it. There's a, a terminal on one of these batteries that's pretty scorched and right there. Um, uh, the, the downside of these batteries right now is even though they're all from the same manufacturer, uh, they're from three different production runs, and I can tell that because of the stickers up here on the side, uh, on this one corner. Um, but uh, absorb glass mat, 
they do fine in the heat and uh, I don't have to give them water and so that's it is what it is so this battery tray is going to go uh, back where the batteries used to live when we bought the boat in 2002 which is in the aft head uh, underneath the vanity countertop um, it's going to be a tight fit um, I have some measurements off of a sister ship from Art Watson out in Fort Lauderdale, Florida and he says his is 15 inches wide and 27 inches deep. Um, I'm going to assume it's the same even if it's not I think I can still adjust this. Uh, what I made this tray out of is um, marine grade starboard. It's a solid surface material some, similar to Corian. Um, you use it with your woodworking tools and um, I just screwed it all together. I didn't, didn't uh, uh, glue anything together with epoxy because I may have to take it apart when I get to uh, Mexico to fit this in. I have a few tasks left to um, install on this. Include some um, fabricating some stainless steel uh, hangers and brackets so that it holds it uh, down and from slipping out. Um, but right now it's in pretty good shape. Some of the other jobs I have going on for the boat is going to be the fuel system. When we bought the boat in 2002, one of the tanks had corroded through um, and we had to have it replaced with two tanks. And the fuel system that the shipwright put in at the time uh, never really worked right. Actually could have had trouble understanding how it worked. And um, it's uh, never been all that good. And the system's starting to drip a little bit. So I'm going to replace all of the uh, uh, valves, consolidate everything into a system that is able to manage all three tanks on the boat. And then I'm also going to uh, plumb in a fuel polishing system. I think it's going to be important for us to have one of those on Concordia where we'll be keeping her. Um, I do keep the tanks full when we leave, but you still have stuff that grows inside diesel settles to the bottom and it can uh, clog your f fuel filters, which happens to us for, you know, once in a while when we get out in some really lumpy seas, it stirs up all the sediment in the tanks and it gets sucked into the, uh, um, uh, into the fuel filters and then you know, you got to start replacing filters and get going again. So I'm hoping that the, the fuel polishing system, um, if I use it in the, uh, uh, when some of the tanks are a little low, I can move fuel through them quickly and stir up the sediment and then trap it in the large filter of the uh, uh, fuel polishing system. Uh, other tasks that I won't be able to do much here on, but I'll be able to assemble all the tools I need is going to be a replacement of all the, uh, the two heads, uh, the toilets and uh, both heads. I'm also going to replace the hand pumps in uh, the, the galley. Um, those got displaced or either or broken. When I replaced the sink in the galley in 2018, the um, on deck activities that I have, and I'll have to wait until uh, my family arrives, is going to be the uh, masthead wind vane and installing a Moby um, radar deflector. Those would be pretty easy, and uh, hopefully, we'll be able to um, push off and get ready to go pretty quickly once they arrive. Um, our plan is to sail the northern area of the Sea of Cortez. I've been wanting to um, sail that area since we went down there in 1998 with some friends who uh, live in Hawaii now, uh, Todd and Larry Hackney. Uh, we did the Enchanted Islands and had intended to go out to Isla de La Garda off of uh, the little town of Bahia de Los Angeles, but uh, timing didn't work out then either. And so our goal is to uh, go across the Sea of Cortez and explore some of the coves on that side, get up to, into Isla de la Garda, and then on into Puerto Penasco. We're not going to have a lot of time, maybe seven days before we have to haul out the boat at uh, the Cabrales Yard, uh, but that's what you do in your commuter cruising. So with that, I'll sign off and uh, look forward to the next one.